QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Inventory Reports. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the View dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be taking a look at inventory reports. As with all other reports, inventory reports are going to be supporting some line item on our major financial reports, those of the balance sheet and the income statement. Inventory reports obviously supporting a balance sheet item, an asset on the balance sheet, that being inventory. You will only have inventory reports if you're going to use the inventory tracking within QuickBooks. That means you have inventory and you're, you're counting not only the dollar amount of the inventory, but also the units of the inventory using a perpetual inventory system and a weighted average method. That's what the default is for QuickBooks to be using to track the actual physical inventory. That will typically be set up when you set up the QuickBooks file if you want to use the inventory settings. And you can find them here if you go to the Edit dropdown, Preferences, and you want to take a look at Items and Preferences in the Preferences. And then in the Company Preferences area, we have the Inventory and Purchase Orders are active. And you have to have that on if that is indeed the case. Then you could be tracking the inventory. I'm going to close this back out. That will typically result in you see in this upper level of the vendor section, which is basically inventory purchasing level of the vendor section. And then when you set up your uh, lists within your lists of your chart of accounts, you will have some items that will be inventory items. When you set up the inventory items, things you sell, in our case guitars, we will then have both the cost of them when we purchase the inventory tracking the cost of the inventory that's what it's going to go on the balance sheet for when we buy the inventory then the sales price that's what we're going to be charging for when we record the inventory then of course when we use this information on the home page to purchase inventory with a purchase order and or bill and i was to if i was to create a bill then of course if i was to include an inventory item on the bill in the item side of things if i was going to say we have an inventory item for an elp epiphone that's going to be the cost of it and then that's what's going to increase the inventory i'm not going to record this and then on the other side when we create an invoice or sales receipt if i was to sell say an epiphone elp then we have and i'm out of stock on them but there would be 500 of the 500 dollars that would be the sales price this would also decrease the uh, inventory, decreasing the balance sheet account. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we're going to be closing this pack out. Let's open up the balance sheet first. Go into the reports drop down, company and financial, and scroll on down to the balance sheet. Balance sheet down here. We've done that a few times, so I'll, I'll do it from there. We're going to go to the customized reports up top. Going to be changing the dates from 01, 01, 21 to 02, 28, 21, and then say OK. Now we have in inventory, that's going to be an asset account. So we have the inventory asset account here. So it's something on the balance sheet, but we want to know more about that account. And that being, uh, what type of inventory do we have? Like how many guitars do we have and what kind of guitars are they? And so for that, we're going to need subledger uh, information. If I double click on the inventory and see the activity, uh, notice it's going to be increasing when we purchase inventory. We might be purchased inventory with a check. Or we might be purchasing inventory with a bill, whether we buy it on account or if we buy, if we just write a check for it. And then it's going to be decreasing when we sell the inventory. The two forms representing sales are going to be the invoices and the sales receipts. So that's going to be the activity in the inventory account. So if we close this back out, then let's take a look at our inventory reports that we have. Then if we go to the reports drop down and we go on down to inventory, we'll have our inventory reports. We can also find them by going to the reports drop down and going to the report center. I'm going to maximize the report center. We're in the standard tab. We're going to go on down to the inventory on the left hand side. There we have our inventory reports. Let's start off with the inventory valuation summary. Probably one of the more most used reports. And I'm going to change the date up top to 022821. So what we have here is this is our inventory items. So we have our, our abbreviated name and then what we have. So we got this uh, uh, diamond uh, head ukulele. We've got one of those. <laughs> and then the average cost is 24. What does it mean to say the average cost is 24? The cost might change over time, but we're using a weighted average method. So that's going to be basically the average cost. We could find that by going to the lists drop down. 
and go to our items lists. And if we find that ukulele, the diamond head ukulele, and double click on it, then we see that we put the cost here at the 24. So that's what it's currently at. If it changed over time, then we would be taking the average cost. That's what it is here at the 24. So we can we can have a percentage of the total assets. Uh, there's one ukulele at at $24. So if I was to consider that compared to the total assets, it would be 24 divided by the 1248. And that would be about 19% uh, or, or I'm sorry, not 19, 1.9%, slightly different. And then we've got this total amount here for the value of the asset. So the 1,248, that's the cost of the asset, not the sales price, but the cost. That should tie out to what's on the balance sheet, 1,248. And we have here a difference. So let's take a look at that difference. It's going to be an adjusting entry, 1,248 minus the 944 we have a difference of 304 if i double click on this item we see that that's an adjusting entry we make we're going to make an adjusting entry at the end of the period it's going to be a timing issue we will then have a reversing entries that will fix that difference so we'll get into that discussion when we get to the uh, adjusting entry process it will be great but you can see that would typically tie out there and then i'm going to go back to the inventory valuation uh, summary then we have the total assets. We have the sales price. That's going to be the sales price. Again, that'll be driven by the item when we set up the item. The service item for this ukulele. We're selling it for $32 or $32 on the sales price. So if I go back to the inventory item, that's the sales price. The retail value is this. This retail value doesn't tie out to anything because this isn't really what we bought it for. All we know is what we bought it for. We're going to try to sell it for this amount. But we're not recording the inventory at the retail price. We're recording the inventory at what we bought it for. So then that's going to be the summary report. That's probably kind of like our standard report that we would be taking a look, a look at when concentrating in on inventory. If we go back to the reports here, let's take a look at the inventory valuation detail report. Let's run that one. Run that report for 010121 to 0228-21. So let's bring this back down one to, to 2020 for the beginning period so we can kind of analyze what's going to go on in here. So we got the like the ELP, one of the major things that we're going to be purchasing and selling. We started off the company file. We're going to start off when we enter the data with the 400 units that we'll have. I'm sorry, with the one unit at $400 that we'll have on, on hand. Then we purchased more. So we have a check. We purchased it with a check. 20000 on the cost, 50 units at the $400, the average price, because we're using weighted average, that brings us up to 20,400, the value that would then be on the on the balance sheet or included in the balance sheet. Then we sold the 50 units. That leaves us with one, uh, one unit left, the one we originally had, still average cost of $400. So now we have $400, which is basically left on the balance sheet. And then we had a sale. We sold that last one with a sales receipt this time. So that means we have zero on hand at the $400. So you can see kind of the activity that would happen for each of these types of, uh, of guitars we had. So right, this was the beginning balance we put on the books, two, two of these uh, semi hollow bodies at 320 cost for 640. We're not talking about the sales price for this report. We're only looking at the cost. And then we had an invoice. So we sold one of the two. We sold one of the two. The cost average cost is 320. So we have 320 left. And then we had a sales receipt. We sold another one, like in the store this time. And then that, bring, that brings it down to zero. So we have zero on hand on those items. So let's close this one back out. Let's go back to the report center again and say, now we've got the inventory stock status. So inventory stock status item. Let's run that one. We'll run that report. And I'll change the dates up top from 010121 to 022821. So now, now we have our inventory items once again. We've got the preferred vendor who we typically purchase them from. We haven't set up a prefer, preferred vendor for all items. So this one we buy from Gibson, this one from, from Fender. Reorder point. So this is going to be when we need to basically do the reorder. So if we might set up a time period that we want to reorder, if we're down to one or two or something like that, then we might uh, reorder. Max might be the max number of units that, that we need. We, we don't want to go over a certain amount. And then this is going to be the number on hand, the orders, purchase orders, uh, reorder quantity, and then the next delivery that we can track, and then the sales, uh, the sales per week here. So I'm going to close that one back out. And then let's take a look at the next one. 
inventory stock status by vendor. So let's run that one. So this will be a detailed report, similar report with the detail from 010121 to 022821. So once again, we have our, our major vendors, Fender and Gibson. These items, although we, we purchased some of them from our major vendors, we didn't we haven't assigned them to the to the preferred vendor when we set up basically uh, the item. So for example, this Epiphone Les Paul, if I go to lists and item list and I go to Epiphone Les Paul and double click on that item, then uh, we should have a preferred vendor. And so you would think the Epiphone Les Paul would be from Epiphone. And then I'm going to say, okay, and then close this back out. And then we should be able to reorganize uh, this one. So Epiphone, if I was to refresh this, uh, the Epiphone Les Paul is now under the, the title of Epiphone. So again, we have just a, a de more detailed, basically, report here. Similar report, inventory stock status by vendor. Closing this back out. We're now going to go to the physical inventory worksheet. Now, this could be useful if you want to take a physical inventory count. So let's go to the run this report. And so this is going to list out the inventory items, of course. And then they're basically saying, here's, here's the quantity on hand that is in our system. We want to compare that then to the physical inventory count. Now, notice when you're tracking the inventory within uh, QuickBooks, if you're using this system, you're using a perpetual inventory system, which means every time you buy the inventory, it's putting it on the books, the quantity of inventory we have. Every time we sell it, make an invoice or sales receipt, it is decreasing the quantity of inventory at that time. So it should be tracking the inventory as we go. But you still need to do a physical count because it's likely that, I mean, possibly you lose a guitar or something happens like that. So this will help you to kind of match up your your line items to your physical count that we should still be doing on a periodic basis daily monthly uh weekly or something some some standard set of time